Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, Extending CubeCTL with Plugins and Crew. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to James Sturdivant, Principal SDE at Microsoft. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to speak as an attendee, but you are welcome to pop any questions into the chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Please feel free to post everything there and we will get to as many questions as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct and please basically be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that recordings and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They are also available via your registration link that you use today and also on our online programs YouTube playlist on the CNCF channel. With that, I will hand things over to James to kick off today's presentation. Take it away, James. Thank you. Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm James Servant, and um, we're going to be talking about extending kubectl. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the plug plugins and crew. Oh, James, I think you muted yourself. Oops, sorry. No problem. There the you go. Button when I was trying to move the slides. <laughs> all right, you're all good. Cool. So uh, the agenda today is to um, go through kubectl plugins, um, just an introduction to what they are, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about crew, uh, which is kind of the way to distribute your plugins, uh, and then we're going to dive into how do we develop one and um, and publishing them. So we'll go through all that and uh, ask questions as we go along and um, we'll either be able to answer them as we go or at the end of the, the session. Uh, so I'm an engineer on the Azure open source team. Um, we uh, do a lot of work in Kubernetes and all of the related SIGs. Um, I'm also a lead for SIG Windows. Um, and I guess the reason I'm here today is uh, I created a uh, Windows debug crew plugin recently, and I uh, showed it to some folks and they thought it was cool and wanted to know how to develop their own plugins. And so hopefully can lay those, lay that uh, groundwork for you. Um, and then, uh, you know, related to my Twitter handle down at the bottom there is uh, I can create fire uh, six different ways with using only sticks and stones. So if you're interested in that, maybe you can reach out to me on Twitter and we can chat about a little bit about what that, what that means. <laughs> Um, so kubectl, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of an assumption here that um, folks are pretty familiar with uh, kubectl. Uh, it's the command line tool for interacting with your cluster, um, your Kubernetes cluster. Um, it, it allows you to look at all the resources. It allows you to inspect logs. You can do cool, interesting things like port forwarding. Um, uh, and here I'm just showing what the command looks like. So kubectl get pods, uh, and we're just listing all the pods out. Um, uh, this is probably a fairly familiar um, tool for a lot of folks. Um, and uh, I think um, you know this is something that you you probably are you use quite a bit. Um, the thing that you may not know is that you can do a lot more with it um, that doesn't come right out of the box. Um, and so. Uh, here I'm showing uh, another tool. Uh, there's a link to it down at the bottom here, but this actually lists all of the um, uh, RBAC rules for a given type of resource uh, and prints it out in this nice fancy list, um, shows you exactly who has access and, and what kind of access they do have. Um, and this, is, this isn't built into kubectl uh, out of the box, but it's, uh, you can add it as a plugin. Um, and another cool example of this is um, uh, a plugin called Sniff, um, and you can point it at a particular pod in your cluster, um, and it will take care of wiring up all of the different components. Um, it will 
run um, the uh, tools to be able to look at all the network traffic. And then it'll even launch um, uh, Wireshark for you and stream the live traffic into Wireshark. Uh, so, so this is a really cool extension for using kubectl. Um, and when, when I saw this, I was like, this is awesome. I need to be able to create something uh, that's as cool as this. So uh, hopefully by the end of this, you'll have an idea of what that looks like. Um, so what is a kubectl plugin? Um, this is from the kubectl uh, documentation. Um, if you think of kubectl as the command tool for like the essential building blocks of interacting with the Kubernetes cluster, um, the plugins are ways of interacting with the, those building blocks in the Kubernetes cluster in, in a much more complex way. Uh, as you just saw, we were able to connect to a pod, um, stream the live traffic running on, on that pod to Wireshark. Um, that's a much more complex scenario than um, you know, kubectl set out to, set, to, to solve, but we can integrate directly into it and, and make that part of our development workflow. Um, and so plugins would uh, essentially extend the kubectl with new subcommands. Um, which allow for new and custom features um, that aren't part of the initial kubectl uh, distribution. Um, and so I, I pulled that from the docs. Um, th there's quite a bit of really interesting, uh, well-written docs out there that you should go check out um, if, you, if you are interested in this type of thing. Is anybody um, out there, maybe you can drop it in the chat here, but is anybody out there using any interesting plugins that um, they'd like to share with the, with the team? With, with everybody here. Uh, kubectl3, okay, I, I don't know about that one, but uh, I'll have to look it up afterwards, It'd be interesting. Um, so what makes up a kubectl plugin? Um, it is literally uh, very simple. It's a standalone binary uh, that begins with kubectl. Um, and so, uh, here's a couple examples. Uh, the one that I, I developed, uh, I named it kubectl windows debug. Um, there's another tool called neat. Um, and so it's just kubectl neat. Um, once you have the binary named that, uh, you move it onto your path and it can be anywhere on your path that you want it to be, um, as long as it's accessible. Uh, and, and then it can be written in any language. So, um, it doesn't have to be written in go. It could be, uh, written in bash, it could be written in rust, um, just depends on, on what you feel comfortable writing that plugin. Um, once it's on your path, you can start to use it. So, um, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, mechanism here to, to be able to extend kubectl, um, but very powerful as you saw. Um, so you can, um, install a plugin by, you know, just taking the, the binary and, and copying it to uh, anywhere on your path. Uh, it doesn't have to be this particular location here, um, but it, do, it does have to, as I, I mentioned, have to start with that kubectl uh, component there. Um, once it's uh, there, you can list all of the various plugins that are um, on your system that uh, kubectl is aware of. Uh, it will iterate through your path and uh, list anything that starts with kubectl. Uh, and so here, um, they'll say this is compatible plugins. Uh, and then once it's on your path, you can use it. Um, so uh, this, this one is a little extension I wrote for Cluster API for Azure. Uh, it's a little bash script that lets me connect uh, to um, the uh, any node over SSH. Uh, uses the SSH key that I have on my, my tool. And um, when, you, when I was developing, I was having a lot of trouble um, connecting to the nodes, uh, we, we do a lot of the infrastructure. And so the, um, the nodes wouldn't necessarily come online because I, I messed something up when I was developing. Uh, and so, but SSH was usually available. And so uh, knowing what the IP address of the node was and, and all of those types of things was just a lot of work. And so now I can just say kubectl capc sh and the name of the capc uh, CRD and I was connected to the node. So I, I kind of simplified my workflow by, um, by writing a little bash script and then um, 
in, in dropping it into the binary. Um, and so this is a, a, a great way and hopefully uh, it's, can inspire you to kind of simplify your workflow in some way. Um, and so I just saw a question from somebody in the chat there. So is there a central place platform marketplace for third party plugins? That's actually my next topic here. So um, obviously, uh, if, uh, if you have it in your repository, it's maybe available to your developers, but um, being able to share it out to the wider world, um, uh, that's what Crew is trying to solve. Um, so you can think of it as the apt-get or npm for kubectl. Um, and uh, there's over currently over 200 plus plugins on there. Uh, you can find the uh, Windows debug one uh, if you're a Windows developer out there. Um, and uh, but there's just so many out there. The ones that I demoed earlier uh, in the slides are, are are also out there. I would assume kubectl tree is available through Crew. Um, if it's not, we uh, should should look at trying to add that there. Um, it, it helps the entire life cycle of the plugin. So it manages installing, removing, updating. Um, you can search for all the plugins right through the command line. Um, and the plugins don't necessarily need to start with kubectl in this case. Um, so if you develop some uh, binary, binary um, uh, I think actually access matrix is uh, not doesn't start with kubectl. Um, it's, it's a different binary name, and Crew will uh, manage that for you. So they they copy it to uh, a local folder with that kubectl um, uh, specification that's that's needed to become a uh, plugin. Uh, and then it also helps with the distri distribution. So um, you can push it up to the, this this chart here, and it helps. Uh, through the command line tools to be able to um, pull it, pull all that down. Uh, so it looks a little slightly different when um, when you're when you're interacting with Crew. Um, so before we saw Cube, you just kind of to install it, you would uh, copy the binary into your uh, onto a path um, in uh, sorry into a folder on your path and. Um, with kubectl, we can search for anything we want um, by any kind of command. It does a fuzzy search and comes back. So here I searched for Windows. Uh, you'll see the Windows debug. Um, it gives you node access. It tells you a little bit about it and then tells you whether or not it's installed. Um, if I want to install it, I then run kubectl crew install Windows debug. Um, and it will manage pulling it down uh, selecting the proper platform. So whether um, I'm on Linux or uh, Windows or a Mac or whatever it is, um, it'll get those all installed in the right place uh, and then tells you how to use it. Um, and so uh, really a nice interface for, for distribution and, and consumption of these. All right. Um, so what I, what I want to do is just quickly uh, go through kind of using some of these tools. Uh, and then once we're done uh, that, just so you can get a feel for them, uh, we'll move over and start talking about how uh, to develop them. Um, so cool. Uh, so the first thing I, I wanted to show here is um, that first tool that I, I sent. So um, I, I have it already installed as a plugin. Um, you can see I've got a, I'm connected to a, a cluster. Um, this is my cluster that I'm, I'm connected to up here. And um, you can see what, what I'm running is uh, just access matrix resource config map. And so uh, this binary uh, kubectl invokes it, and it goes out and does a bunch of mapping across all of the RBAC rules and, and uh, CRDs out there, and then comes back and says, you know, here's who has access and what they can do with those tools. So um, really, really cool uh, way to get more information about your system. Um, the next thing um, is, is it interacts just like um, any other kubectl tool. So uh, there's, you know, we when I do dash H, I get the usage, um, I get various examples. Um, you can see I can specify a different context. 
um, that I want to use. Uh, and so a lot of these plugins are built to just use the same tooling that you're familiar with um, through kubectl. Um, the, the, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna go back here. Um, there we go. Uh, so the other uh, thing I wanted to show is that kubectl sniff. Uh, so I have a pod out there and I'm just gonna run this on there. Uh, what this does is um, it uh, will wire itself up to the node and then it launches Firefox, uh, sorry, it launches um, Wireshop for me. And you can see that I'm, I'm actually streaming the live requests from uh, that pod right now. So um, 10.224.30 is my, um, uh, uh, HTTP T bin uh, binary. Uh, so uh, getting that wired up uh, and getting the traffic streamed to me would have been, you know, a fairly challenging situation. But with the plugin, it becomes very trivial. So I'm going to stop that there. And, and so if I, I look back at the pods here, um, you'll see that this this is indeed it was coming from that pod it's it's not from you know just uh, my local traffic or anything it's being streamed over the top so we can look at um the plugins that i have so here um and we can see i've got some crew plugins that uh we, we were just looking at um here's here's an example of one that i've installed locally uh, I don't have this. This is something that you can install from the repository of Cluster API for Azure, but it's not something that I've um, de uh, deployed into Cruise, so it's just local. Uh, these other components here are, they're just kind of uh, some additional things because I have some extra things wired up because I'm running on WSL. Um, so uh, to install um, a, a tool, um, I can, um, I'm, I'm in my Windows debug tool right now. Uh, and so I can copy uh, this component here to, um, uh, to my uh, system. Now, if I do the um, plugin list, I should see that added there. Um, and so now, I can do cube CTL windows debug, and this will pick a random uh, node to run it on. I can also specify the node I want. And I get dropped on to the actual uh, node here. Um, this is powered through host process containers um, and we're in um, beta right now. And so there's uh, this long GUID here, but this will eventually go away. Uh, we're planning on adding support for host process containers in 126, it's gonna go stable. Uh, and uh, you're gonna see similar features here, but there's cool things um, that that we're doing with, with that type of stuff, so. Um, excellent. Uh, so when I'm using Crew, um, I can um, also use Crew to install these plugins and so I can kind of mix and match here. Um, but if I use crew, you see, I get a little bit nicer, um, UI, uh, it tells me what plugin is, what version I'm on. Um, and then I also have the ability to do things like, um, I'm searching. So, um, here I haven't installed windows debug as a, um, as a crew plugin. And so it's not showing it up as installed, but, um, Oh, I could then go ahead and uh, install it as a plugin and it would work. So, um, so now, now it's installed and I can uh, use it just the way I just showed you there. So um, that's kind of just a quick demo of kind of how these work and how you get started with them. Um, and next we'll move on to uh, developing plugins again. Let me just switch back here. All right, I think you can see my my uh, slides again here. Cool. Uh, so developing plugins, I think 
the first thing you need to kind of address is um, how do you want to develop it? Do you want to develop the um, plugin directly as a kubectl plugin, or do you want to move towards crew? Um, and I think there's a little bit of trade-off here. Um, I, I think you know developing the a direct kubectl plugin can be really quick. It can be a simple bash script that you prefix the name of the binary with kubectl. Um, that's what I did with the cluster API for Azure um, script. Uh, it was something that I you know had a little script on my side and just wanted to integrate it into kubectl. Uh, it kind of just eases me my uh, developer workflow. Um, you can keep it right in your, your repo so you don't have to go through publishing and maintaining versions and all those types of things. And it's super simple to install. So those are kind of like the, the pros of, of that. Um, I guess if you look at Crew, um, Crew provides that distribution platform. It also manages multiple platforms. Um, my bash script um, it doesn't necessarily work uh, or no, like I have to tell different commands to install it on different systems. Um, with Crew, it's just the single Crew install plugin. Um, there's, um, it also makes the upgrades easy. So I can just say upgrade and it'll go through and upgrade all of the plugins. Um, it has a wider audience because it's out there as a, as a marketplace. Uh, and then it does have some install uh, metrics. Um, and then one other thing I, I didn't list here that I would call out is that Crew also has the ability to host your own um, marketplace. So the, the one that I was showing and demonstrating from is from the, the public marketplace. But if you were uh, in an enterprise and you wanted to give your give access to some of your uh, plugins to the developers, uh, you could you could host your own so that, that that way you knew where those those plugins were coming from and, and could manage them from that perspective. Um, the next thing when you start to talk about developing these is um, what language would you start in? The, the Bash is it's just one of those really easy ones to get started with. Um, there's you know no build process, and so uh, you can you can kind of put together a script really quickly. Um, the you you can run them in any other language, um, but the other really well supported language is Go. Um, it it comes with the cross platform, so it'll work um, on all the platforms that your your users might be on. Um, you get access to the CLI runtime. You can also get access to um, the the Go library for Kubernetes. Um, it helps you know gives you the printing logic out of the box. It can set up configuration. Um, and, and one other big one that it provides is some clouds require some additional support for authorization. And um, that comes out of the box with the, the Go plugins. Um, and so um, when, you, when you're choosing, it, it probably depends on, you know, are you going really simple or are you uh, want to make this distributed out to the, the wider ecosystem? Um, I, I chose to go with um, Crew, and I think the rest of the presentation is going to be kind of focusing in on Crew. Uh, I, I think developing a plugin in your local repository is pretty straightforward. Um, developing for Crew requires a few extra components. Um, and some of the things that, um, that need to be in that Crew package, uh, at the very least, is uh, a license file, a readme on how it works, uh, and then any of the binaries that you're going to be copying. Um, and so uh, you can put this as a tar file or a zip file and um, and uh, host it somewhere. And that, that becomes your crew package. That crew will go and uh, grab and then drop onto the nodes. So at the very least, those are the three things that you need to have. Um, the, the next part is the crew manifest. Um, this doesn't go inside the, the package. It goes um, actually in part of the crew, um, uh, the crew index, which is where uh, everything is queried from. Uh, and so this manifest is uh, just some YAML. Um, it, you add information like the meta, metadata for the name, um, the, the version, the home page. Um, and then what platforms? So this is how Crew manages the platforms um, that are 
uh, that, it, that it unpacks for. Uh, so you can specify, you know, it, you match this um, particular platform and this architecture. Uh, and this is where you go and get the package for that particular ar architecture and the rest of it crew will handle and, and deploy. Um, the crew does provide kind of uh, a templated you, uh, you, um, templating language, uh, and which you can see here, I'm, I'm using add Yuri and Shaw. So it will go out and um, drop all the, those binaries in there. It can also drop in the tag name. And so this is, a, this is kind of a template that you use when you're actually going and publishing um, your manifest. Um, the, there are some starter templates out there. Um, there's an unofficial one called crew plugin template, and it will give you that, um, package. It sets up go for you. It has all of the components installed. Um, it has the pipelines for you to, to enable, to, to get going. So you can, um, essentially fork this. Uh, and then add your own logic and you can be published and running in um, crew, uh, running as a crew pilot and pretty quickly. Um, the uh, other other one that's really useful is the uh, Kubernetes sample CLI plugin. So this is a example Go Lang plugin that you can use to uh, get started for the plugins. Um, this doesn't have all of the templating around the crew side of things. And so you can kind of mix and match here to, to learn how to get started. Um, so you've developed your plugin, um, you've got your package um, and you've got uh, your crew manifest template. Um, now you want to automate this so you don't have to, to worry about it. Um, and so uh, here's a, a snippet from um, my Windows debug um, uh, GitHub pipeline. And here uh, I, I'm showing the, the dead simple steps to be able to publish one of these things. Um, there's more complicated ways to do this, but essentially all I need, all I need to have is the tar file with uh, the license, the readme, and the binary that I'm interested in. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I run some tests, and then I tar that up, and, um, and then I can release the package uh, as a particular file. And then um, I call um, this crew release bot. So this is developed by the crew maintainers. Um, and since 99% of changes to your plugin are going to be just version bumps, uh, they've automated the entire like deployment and updating. Uh, and so this release bot will look at that template file that we just reviewed, the crew template file, uh, fill it in with all the relevant information and, and then open up a PR into, um, the crew index. Um, and this is an example of what that PR looks like. Um, it is. So, so somebody ran the crew release bot. Uh, it opened up a PR in the crew index. Uh, I said, we're bumping the version to 1.7. And uh, the maintainer has another bot who verifies that it was just a version bump and then uh, merges that PR. And then you can now get the update through uh, crew update, um, the, whatever plugin you're working with. Uh, so automation is pretty straightforward and simple um, uh, and highly recommend it. Um, makes it really easy to, to get out new versions um, without doing too much work. Uh, I mentioned um, that you can get a little bit more complicated uh, than just tarring up some files. Um, it, and so uh, the crew plugin and the template that I mentioned earlier uh, uses uh, Go Eco Releaser, which is another tool which helps automate building and packaging uh, the projects. Uh, and so, um, again, you can uh, provide a Go Releaser template file. Uh, and then during that build step, you reference it and it will pump out the packages of, for all the different OS's arches and um, 
label them all appropriately, and then you can use that cute releaser to publish the entire uh, package out. So um, the there's a few things that I learned when I was going through this process. Um, I showed you the kubectl uh, windows debug, and it's three separate um, commands. Um, the way that kubectl uh, plugins work is if you put a dash between the commands, they become separate commands in your uh, system. Um, and with crew, it ends up, um, they convert those dashes to underscores. And so when I install um, Windows Debug without uh, crew, I can say kubectl windows debug and then the node name. Here, if I install with crew, it's kubectl windows dash debug. Um, I didn't find this out until after I'd already published it and um, had some folks already using it. And so I didn't want to have to change the, the UX here. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're developing these. Um, uh, that they're they're gonna do that to underscore conversion. Um, the crew index bot is uh, or the crew release bot was really super helpful. I spent a lot of time uh, getting that working initially, uh, and it submitted the first PR, and then my PR got immediately closed. It didn't get merged like we saw in the previous slide. Um, and what I found out was that you need to actually generate that manifest um, by hand the first time. The crew release bot has um, it's an extra component that, or an extra flag that will print it uh, to standard out. So you can pipe that into a file and, and then just submit that to um, the plugin manually, uh, the plugin index manually. Um, uh, the reason this is done is the crew maintainers want to make sure that your description is good. Um, th th they went through a whole process with me and, and said, they don't, like, this should be shorter, uh, change this wording here, uh, that type of thing that they can't do through those bots since you don't own the, the PR itself. Um, and so another just useful thing um, uh, to, to be aware of. Um, and then finally, uh, you can test these locally. Um, using the uh, crew bot release, you, you can generate that manifest locally. Uh, and then kubectl uh, has um, a uh, download package in use archive function. So I can point it at a particular um, archive on, on a URL somewhere, and I can uh, it'll unpack that for me. Uh, it won't go out to the crew index, and so I can overload that. and. Um, you know, do um, do some testing of the pre-release uh, of the binary that I um, was working on. Um, and so, yeah, just a few few items there um, to be aware of. So I, I think that was most of the content that I had prepared. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to call out the, the docs for uh, kubectl. Uh, and plugins in general, um, the crew uh, IO, the crew developer guide. Uh, and then if you're looking for a really simple example to, to get started with, um, my Windows debug uh, crew uh, solution there is, uh, it's a, it's a one-liner uh, or one, you know, it's 10 lines of bash script and, um, and a bunch of pipelines to automate deploying it to crew. Um, and so I hope this gives you a quick overview of um, how, how to get started with plugins and um, develop them. Um, and uh, I hope you are able to uh, get, get started and, and share your awesome plugins. Okay, thanks so much, James. Um, anyone else have questions? Let's go ahead and pop them into the chat and we can work through any more of those. Give everybody a minute to see if they can type it oh, in. Sure. <laughs> any feedback to you if you um, had any questions about anything I was talking about? 
Sure. Or any links that anyone needs to any of the pieces of the presentation. Nobody has a question. <laughs> All right. Well, James, was there anything else you wanted to cover? I think that was it. I was uh, okay. hoping for a few more questions, but we can. Well, if no one else has any questions, I think you know where to find James. If you think of one post event um, or curious in any other um, kubectl information. But other than that, if no one else has a question, we can wrap things up and let everybody let everybody go. Going once, going twice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, James, so much uh, for your presentation and for answering everyone's questions. Thank you, everyone, for attending another uh, CNCF Live webinar. Be sure to catch us for our live stream show tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. You can also register through cncf.io. And... Um, Thank you everyone for joining us. So we'll see y'all again soon. Thank you, James. Yeah, thank you. We'll talk to you soon.